When you're in the middle of the country, little towns can be market areas for huge regions, and because of that, all the antiques and vintage come to those little towns. We're in Litchfield, Kentucky today, and we're going to find out where vintage and antique things go here and see if we can find some bargains we can flip for a profit. So let's go. Down to Vendor Mall, we're gonna see a lot of new stuff, a lot of resale stuff, stuff off of pallets, and hopefully antiques and vintage. So we have some guests with us today, Zeno with the Fred Flintstone mallet, and our friends, Laura and Melissa. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> And I'm so excited because uh, we haven't gotten to get together in a long time. So we're going to shop around the mall and they're going to put up with me filming for a little while. And then we're going to go have lunch and do fun things like that. $6.99 for these lamps. Now that seems like a pretty good deal. They're electric. They've got the hurricane shades. These appear to be actual glass crystals, not plastic. And they've got marble bases. So those are actually pretty nice. I think somebody would probably like those. And I'll probably come back and pick those up. I'm making my first round now, and that way I won't make them carry all my stuff for me while we wander. So what hey, everybody. That's a pretty good price, actually. $34.67. It's interesting, in these vendor malls, a lot of times people have this tendency to price things in some really strange way. But this is Victorian, and it doesn't seem to have any damage. The gessoing is all good, and it's got lots of texture and the oak. So, yeah. This is definitely something that could double in value if you took it to the right place. These people seem to have a lot of just sort of basic kitchen things. 212 on the white kitchen cabinet, 695 on the enamel stove, and a lot of primitive items as well, this handmade bench. We see a lot of demand for these little cast iron stoves here in Kentucky. Sometimes people will actually use them to heat a cabin or a shed or a workshop, but also, people just really like cast iron here. This one says it was out of Southern Railway Caboose, and that's why it's $444. I've seen other caboose size pieces like this, and that was where the crew would sit, and they would have coal, and they'd be able to make food and take care of themselves on long-distance trains. So that's a pretty neat piece. This booth definitely has some old stuff. We've got this neat old cash register, although it's missing its lid. That would have just been metal. That could be restored. And no key. And they are asking a hundred bucks, which if you knew how to restore this, could be a great deal, or if you just wanted it for the look. All right, let's see what we have in here. Mostly reproductions or very rusted or scraped as far as the signs go, but there are a few original ones in here. I see a Fenton basket hiding under here with the hide hobnail, but that green is not the easiest color for me to sell. These are treasure craft, the little owls, and they're only $4.99, which is a great price, but they have efflorescence, which means that water got trapped between the brown rubbed glaze, uh, like maybe humidity. That happened a lot in their Hawaiian plant where that's why they only could produce six months of the year because they were on the wet side of the island. And if the humidity got in and you did the brown finish, the white would come through. It was a reaction to the glaze. Some old tins. A lot of these 50s and 60s ones are just likable and you can use them as canisters and things. This is a 1980s 100th anniversary log cabin. I like the king syrup better with the lion. That's actually pretty neat. And that's an older one, $14.99. You know, again, the graphics are kind of fading. It probably spent a lot of time out in a shed. $49.99, pretty decent price nowadays for these. Well, this is Louisville stoneware with the geese. $10 for the plates, not bad. But again, I don't see anything, even this neat old cannon at $150 is a cool thing, but more than I can pay. Oh, that's kind of neat. Interesting, they ink stained it. Somebody, uh, somebody had it on their desk and probably dropped an ink bottle is what I'm guessing. I like these old things. And unfortunately, when they are falling apart like this, they usually end up just getting framed. But it does have the whole thing, doesn't it? Libretto and all. That seemed like kind of a depressing story, actually. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Three for six dollars on the Mexicana. If these are in good shape, that is definitely a buy. A lot of dinnerware is not so easy to sell, but this pattern still goes pretty well. However, I see a chip on number two. So we're looking at about three dollars each for the rim soup. <laughs> I'm still thinking that that's worth getting. 
and these were done in 1942. You can tell by the date code. A little baseball bat set there. I have never seen the pen set with all of the pens. That's 5750. I did not realize they came in a stand like that originally. Old Popeye card game there for $59. Speed knob from the steering wheel of the car and some emblems. So there are some things for just about any collector that comes in here, I would say. And here is a computing scale from a grocery store. And this one is only priced at $75. If you like this sort of thing for a prop or if you're doing an old candy dis counter display or that sort of thing as a uh, part of a rec room in a basement, for example, well, these things are fun and they've gotten less and less expensive because they're large and heavy. Glad I have an entourage today. I was showing them this forest green hand-blown pitcher, which is vintage, that I was very proud of picking up. And they said, oh, well, we saw something that we're surprised you walked right by. So they're taking me back to see. Let's see what I missed. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, you know, I saw this on the shelf and I walked up to take a picture and then I got distracted and the short-lived and very vintage Blanco Sandblast Mark from 1958 to 61. Melissa, yes, she gets credit. She spotted it and wow, that's great. I'm so glad that uh, someone else had a set of eyes to help me find this really great piece because that's a wonderful price at $15. Yes, very good, Melissa. <laughs> and now they're going to argue over which one saw it first. But the point was, it wasn't me. So I'm so glad that they spotted this. And yay, great purchase. This case is half off. Ah, yes. And the pocket mirror of Bill and Hillary when they were in office and Bill was cutting the budget. That was actually the last time the nation ran a surplus rather than a deficit. 28 on the Disney World lunchbox. So again, you know, they have some stuff. It all seems to be priced about retail. Some old and fun things in this case. The Peanuts lunchbox, I remember as a kid. In the red, you don't see that one quite as much as the yellow-based one. Medical license plate topper is $46. And I remember these vintage barefoot foot pedals that people would put on their customized cars back in the early 70s. $25.99 for that. Lone Ranger in silver, but that's a hundred bucks. A hundred ten for Steve Austin without even having the box. I have to say their prices are silly on these toys. Speed Star is a little Japanese battery-operated toy, but it's missing the steering wheel and the person who sat in it, and they still want a hundred fifty dollars. So that would be a no. Buffalo China fish plates. This stylized fish looks like something that's going to be pretty recent, though. That's a later mark. But they're only $1.50 each, and they are neat looking. This tray looks like a 50s thing, and it is Red Wing for $8.99. The teapot here with the metallic glaze is McCoy, and this is a later McCoy mark where you see the stylized box underneath. I like the glaze. $9.99 doesn't seem like a bad price. With the interest in bimetallic things, it would behoove us to take a moment and look at this. It looks like it's a lesser version of the things you see made in Spain. $8.99 is certainly a fair price. I don't think the design is particularly fantastic, though. Little seals are cute. We see these around. Made in Mexico by Oxford. It's the first time I've actually seen the label. I never knew they were made in Mexico. I don't see... Oh, there we go. $8.99 for the pair. Cute little screen print set here, and what's nice is it is not just the picture, it actually has the tumblers. Usually these are broken up when we see them these days. $40 for the set is a fair retail price. Down here, this looks like something out of the 60s or 70s. And it is $14, Ceramic Lion Bank. No coupon necessary, dough for a dime, regular 25 cent modeling dough. Old store display, I like the day glow. I don't like the $15 price, however. High voltage sign, that's a cool thing, but again, $75. The prices on the stuff that is older, for the most part, other than the one dealer we found the deals in, people here seem to be reaching for the sky. And here's a 1920s era enameled scale by Stimson of the same nature as the one we saw from the 50s. This one's priced at $150. Does appear to work. 
I should get this and hang it in Zeno's office because he's very allergic to cats. So <laughs> I always love to point out kitty things. This one is Mr. Jiff Kittens from a private collection originally painted by Riker. It was a very famous painting in its time and is worth quite a bit of money. You can see the 1893 date. This is when the Victorian obsession with cats was a big thing. And these cats are being very naughty because they see the birds on top of mother's hat and they think that they should eat them. A lot of birds were rendered nearly extinct by the craze for birds on women's hats in the Victorian era. These cork pictures from Japan are starting to be collectible. I remember we had a pair of these when I was a kid. Here's the problem with them. They would flake cork, so you want to look for them and make sure that the birch pieces are all still there, but this one seems pretty intact. It's lost a little paint though. This was not considered high art, but it's really interesting, I think, now. There's the Yukag Bark from Japan. They were the importer of this particular one, $12.50. If it was in a little better shape, I would probably try to resell that because it's a very definite late 70s look and the colors are interesting to me. This appears to be the overflow area. Not sure if we're invited back here or not but I don't see anything that really draws me. The thing I like in this booth that I see right off is this cooler. I find that water coolers do well. And this one is $50, which is probably about right. This is Mary Hadley with the great pattern. There's the M.A. Hadley mark on the bottom. I am curious to see now that Mary Hadley has been revived and reopened, what kinds of things they are still making. We'll have to do some comparison and then we'll know what the old things are that we need to still look for for our collectors. There are some old soda can collectors who look for this era because they like the baseball players. These are tin, and these are just before they all went aluminum. So this is early 70s. In fact, it looks like 1975. It does have the UPC label. And we've got, let's see, Dave Cash, Sparky Lyle. Now that's somebody who had some fame, priced at about $3 each, which is honestly probably about what they're worth. Sometimes the trick is to shop for things that are out of season, so let's see what the prices on the sled and the snowshoes are, since it's May and it's 70 degrees out. $125 on the snowshoes, $45. Apparently we're still sticking with our winter prices on those, which are about retail. Well, I see some glass here, the Indiana Blue which does sell if you keep the prices down. This one says Vintage Amberina Shades Hand Blown Blinko Art Glass. Well, there is no such thing as Blinko. I know they're saying Blinko, but this is not a Blinko piece with the attached bottom like that. It's a little lightweight for that. It probably was an American-made piece. One of the other West Virginia companies in the 60s, I suspect, and $40. Another cute radio. This is an Arvin radio. These were made in Princeton, Kentucky, right near where I am. And this one's only $27.50. It's plastic. It's a little scraped here, and that's a bit of a problem. But it's a good price for what it is in working order. This is a blower that would have originally been part of a blacksmith's shop, and the forge would have been next to it. They are suggesting that you could use this to move sawdust or to aerate a forge. And it's $300, which seems to be about the going rate for these if they work. And the antique scale is not a bad price at $60. The inter-ocean family scale up to 150 pounds. So this could have been used in a hardware store, a feed store, or even at home. Another cash register here, $150 on that one. Looks like it works. That looks like what was done in the 50s and was in every single Navy exchange that I remember growing up. This is 1980s. You can see the golfers on it, so there's a little bit of vintage. Let's see what else they might have in this booth. Again, mostly new things, but you never know. One thing about a vendor's mall is you really have to take a moment to look at any booth because even if it mostly seems new, an old thing that's good and of value could be lurking right in the middle and they might not know. That's where bargains are found. Jim Dandy Butter Churn with the electric top. That was a big improvement in the 1930s. The rubber's a little split on the handles, but it looks like it's in good shape otherwise. These were made by uh, the Alabama Manufacturing Company in Birmingham. And the Gem Dandy is priced at 100 That's a little bit on the cheap side. If you're doing some farmhouse decorating, these two 
old rubber tired wheels might be fun. They're 75 for the pair, which seems like a pretty good price. But of course, they're just to look at because this is petrified hard rubber at this point. Brown enamel pot. These are 1950s era. You can tell the handle is aluminum and it's got this banding, so it's not super, super old. But it's also not brand new, but they're a lot light, more lightweight compared to the earlier pieces. Here is a pattern that was very common in its time, but it's very cute now. We see it in Kentucky. I don't see it in a lot of other places. It's Bubble, which was also known as Provincial when it was first made by Anchor Hawking around 1960. And in the blue and the green and the red, they do have some collectors. There's 10 of these for only $15 and they look flawless. I think that's a pretty good price even these days. And then here's the serving bowl. It's just a nice sort of a light blue. Four dollars on that. Now I think it's missing a piece, but it looks like we've got a hall trickolator here. When you see this distinctive top, you can spot these from a mile away. I saw one in green recently. This one's a great Chinese red, but it's got a chip out of it. There's the trickolator product and Hall China's mark on there but it will have to stay in that condition. Again, you have to take a look because this space looks practically empty and it looks mostly like just boring used stuff and some fairly new stuff, but I see a Murata bowl down here. Now, the question is, do they think it's worth a fortune? Oh my goodness, yes they do, $175. This is priced higher than everything in the booth combined. Is it nice? Yeah. Is it interesting? Yeah, colors are different. Is it rare? Would not call these rare. I see one thing I think is old that is actually really fun here, and that's this table. It is a globe table lamp, so look at this. The shade is actually a globe, and we can probably get an idea of the age if we look and see the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And Germany is east and west so this looks like something out of the 70s it's just fun and interesting and 30 dollars. well there's some old stuff in here and no reasonable offer refused well i like the sound of that this is a great old sign here it needs restoration very badly and the, fortunately the damage is in the worst possible place but this is old this is old enamel you can see the texturing helmar turkish cigarettes they are asking 500 as is and unfortunately, with it needing so much work, it's just not worth that price. No smoking signs sell well. This one's 1950s. It's got some weight to it and a little bit of a po sort of an art modern style with the squarish letters and the linear leftover from Streamline Deco. But that is priced about what I would get for it. One thing about shopping in vendor malls is sometimes you'll find real deals like we did in a couple of the spaces and sometimes you'll find people who are pricing it like an antique mall because in essence it is the antique mall for the town. The old industrial cart is $175. That's got a good look. Let's see what the other signs are priced at. The one I like is actually hearing protection required because it's embossed and stuff like that ends up being put in places like well, some people actually put them in manufacturing places and use them as if it was new, but a lot of times you'll see them in places like in an office for someone who deals with ear, nose, and throat stuff or hearing aids or that sort of stuff. Even a fish wouldn't get into trouble if he kept his mouth shut. Well, I have to say, I see some cute things in this space. $42.99 on the yellow stool. I haven't really found anything yet that seems like a bargain, but we'll keep looking. $2.25 on the cock and bull sign. We see these sets from time to time from about 1980 holiday designs. These were made in the U.S. $23 for the set. If you like the look, they're certainly functional. This is chenille, but this is a very synthetic chenille that you see later in time, and people want the cotton, so avoid this. Yes, it's got the look of the era, but it just doesn't feel good. But what I'm interested in is this piece, because this is Blendo. A little, little damaged. Fading is what you really have to worry about. Sometimes you can get those metal 
lines out with mother's mag wheel polish or that sort of thing barkeeper's friend but i am a little concerned the color is lost it's only five dollars see the light or weren't the yellow light over oh a yellow spotlight rather than the usual clear one 2767 well this seems to be perfect but most of these are if it's not a singer featherweight they just don't sell for a lot this one's 77 dollars great art deco style 1930s for someone who's sewing it'll probably run for another 75 years <clears throat> hall teapot here is only nine dollars and 93 cents that is pretty inexpensive and with teapots starting to be a thing again that one's a consideration and actually this figural one i'm sure is japanese it seems like the painting is well done i don't see any chips even though she's lightweight she has a big well in the bottom because originally she probably had a music box in there. See the little places for the attachments? Well, it's a shame that that's missing. But she's cute. A lot of people using these for bridal showers. This is a very basic saddle and I think it's actually really well priced. It is $95.67 and it's just a basic black saddle but it's got the nice horn here. And it's got the nice seat here, so this would have been something you could ride in a more long distance or high speed situation. And that seems like a really good price. As a decorative item, I think I could probably double my money on that. So we're going to put that on the thinking list as I walk around too. Big giant yoke right here. $112. Bake the Blue Ox's own personable adjustable yoke. It is about that size. A lot of people are hanging these from ceilings and then suspending lighting from them for the farmhouse look, especially if you're doing real farmhouse and not just sort of it's painted white and we're pretending that it's a barn door. There is another pair of prints here, early litho prints. This is In Love. I get the feeling he's in love. She doesn't seem terribly interested. $38. You'd have to do some restoration on the frame. Blessed are the peacemakers. And while I really do believe that, I have to say in this case, it may be that the peacemaker ends up in the middle of something she wishes she'd stayed out of. People are liking these strange specialty builds just for display. And it's $13.69 for all of them with the basket how complicated that was. This is something that was meant to burn for a long, long time, so it had lots of filaments, but it went for a very specific purpose, and that is going to make that not usable for anything other than decoration. Kentucky is a very old state, and that's why we see pieces like this. This is early Victorian, meaning probably Civil War time. You can tell that hairstyle the gentleman is wearing is very indicative of the 1850s, as is the design of the frames with the faux painting. They're $71 for the pair. You can see this is faux because a big chip has come out here and you see the base wood underneath. 35 on this, but it's got some problems because it got wet on one side. A lot of these spent time out in sheds and garages and they weren't necessarily taken care of well. We've got a bunch of car manuals, but they're Vegas and Monzas. Those were not great cars, new and they're not well remembered now, so that's probably not something that is going to have a high demand. Old C or Silvertone radio has kind of a neat look to it. $35, it says it works. That's about what this era of radio are going for these days. I've got some older stuff in here. I see some ring wear. This is a tight ring, so that's not Bauer. This might be, but it doesn't look like they're glazed. No, this looks like one of the Midwestern potteries. Once Bauer ringware came out in 1930, lots of other companies started doing ring patterns. Butterfly in this neat little shape here, $29.99. They just have them marked USA, but these are hull pottery from the 1950s. Cream and sugar for 30. Those aren't bad prices if you were collecting these. They're 30 for the casserole. These are all about right collector prices. Apparently Vendors Village is a chain. Terre Haute, Danville, Kentucky, Clarksville, Tennessee, I think, and here in Litchfield, Clarksville, Indiana. Ah, okay. 
Now we're taking a quick jog through downtown Litchfield around the old courthouse square. There's a good vintage store on one of these side streets with clothing, but we're headed to another vendor mall. So we're going to try here. This is Litchfield Peddler, and this is a local vendor mall. So let's see what they've got. It says they have antiques, collectibles, anything and everything. Well, I'm in the market for antiques, collectibles, and vintage anything. So let's see. Yeah. That is a cute set. Yeah, that's little salt cellars for two. Oh, yes, isn't that sweet? It's one salt shaker and a salt dip to put it in, I guess. Yeah, those are neat. Only five fifty on that one. That seems like a pretty good deal. It's got a good Art Deco look. Horse head salt and pepper shakers. A little bit of this corning ware. It's Royal China's Bucks County. Four ninety nine each on the dinner plates. And then we have this one, which is the Copper Tone Color Craft, Indianapolis, Indiana. And I like the Color Craft stuff. This one in this color is only $8, which would be a great price, but it is scuffed at the bottom, and they've just got to be perfect if you want to sell these these days. Original Tupperware colors, yes. Uh, one of them split. But... Yeah, they often are. I understand Tupperware is going away, so they're very pliable, they're very smooth, and yes, lubricated. Yeah, they're different than the uh, later stuff. These are in excellent shape. They are as vinyl as vinyl can be. And they are priced at seventy-five dollars each. Are they wonderful because they're old, or are they well just old? They have enough wear in the solid arms. I think maybe these were done in the late '60s when this would have been a really up-and-coming color. It's got that little face. It's short. We actually saw this guy at our front door this morning. Here's one of these 80s era anchor hawking flash colored vases. This one's five dollars. They started to get flowers and all sorts of extra on them. And that's when they really get away from the sort of late mid-century design that made them more desirable to collectors now. You'll also see that the green is starting to lift off of the glass. That's why you have this lighter color of separation. So definitely something if you like these, you want to inspect condition really well. Down here we have a piece that's been painted by the company that made orchard ware in California. I love the shape of that piece. And this one's only $9. Kind of tempting, but I haven't found a lot of people who collect that pattern. Here in the original packages are these, $12.99 for a set. If I could find more of the decanters that look like the space capsule, those are the things that really sell well. A bunch of various toothpick holders. Most of these are newer, except for this one, the Hobbs. That is actually an older one from about 1900 priced at $16. Oh, yes, the 70s when people made funky hats crocheted with beer stuff. Yes, $20. That's about what they go for now. They're sort of a folk art novelty. Oh, and tab, 64 ounces. A corn beer. This was something made by Olympia. This is what got several members of my high school soccer team expelled from school and kicked off the team because they drank it in the back of the bus after a game one day. Wrestling cards from the 80s. There's Andre the Giant. Not a cute guy. Wienermobile whistles. A couple of Fair's Ale bottles. The salt and pepper, they want 20 for those. Tupper toys. Tupper canoe, so you can have your kids play with BHT. Fun on land and sea, $16.99. Mahjong set in Bakelite, including the Bakelite wisps and the knobs. So this is going to be 1930s or 40s, and $120 is actually a fair price on that. Someone even made a little cozy to hold the whisks. Oh, yeah, the hot plate with the, with the cord, yeah. You don't actually see that piece very often. How is how much is that? Yeah, twenty dollars. That's reasonable for what it is. Nineteen seventies, around the time of the bicentennial, you see the Liberty Bell Carnival glass. See the newer Carnival has this more oily looking iridescence. And this piece is priced at fifteen. I see some older ceramics in the back mixed in with a lot of newer things here. So let's take a look and see if there's anything interesting to us. This is a Japanese piece, 1930s, $2. I mean, it's cute. It's got age. 
There isn't really a specific collector for that though. Luster wear and a sailing ship. So this is going to be 1930s. That looks like perhaps the Nina, the Pinto, or the Santa Maria. And this one has a German mark on it rather than the Japanese marks we usually associate with luster wear of the 30s, but the Germans did it too. Price on this sandwich tray is $6.95. The American press cut was an anchor hawking pattern that was made for about 20 years, and that's why there's just so very much of it with these big press glass stars in it. A few of the pieces, like the oil lamp, sell for big money, but it's really easy to get the completer pieces. The punch bowl you see is $25. Depression glass, and they have it correctly identified as open lace or lace edge by anchor hawking. They have these for $5 each or six for 25, and that really is a good price. They show here on the computer that they're supposed to go for 12 to $14 each. I think their prices are definitely much better than that. Yes, Black Americana, and these were made in Japan in the 50s, and they are controversial to some folks, but a lot of my collectors are black. The two African ones are $29 for the pair. The other ones, the one on the right, honestly, is the one that bothers me the most because that one was made about 1990. And certainly by then you would think people would have a little more sensibility about it. This is an Abingdon vase here. Same color as my bathroom fixtures because they made those too. It's got one little glaze pop here, which is unusual because the quality was really good on this stuff. But sometimes right near the kiln, you'd have something that would affect it. $15, pretty good price. And then this glass jar with the tulips. Good colors, good condition, $15. That might be a reseller price there, but it's got a little chip out of the screen paint. Kentucky Derby glasses, seven to nine dollars when you get back into the 70s is about the right price. And they go back to 74. This was the year that had the error printed on it. But this one is fixed. It says Canon Arrow 2 one in 1971. The incorrect one says Canon Arrow. Orange Fire King mugs, $8 for the set of four. That's probably a pretty good deal right there, right out of the early 70s, the straight-sided ones, good colors. Only $3 each for the pair of screen print glasses and $3 for two swanky swigs. So I think I'm gonna pick some of this stuff up. Look at these simulated wood grain speakers that look like little tables and could be used as such. These are right out of the early 70s. This says that the stereo speakers work, the record player does not play, but the 8-track player does work, sound design, and they want $80 for the whole thing. And actually, I have to say, I think the speakers alone are probably worth about that. And the planter here is a cobbler's bench. This is going to be by Gilner of California. They were mainly known for little elves and pixies. And at their peak, they put their name in big letters, and the date usually was 1951. That's the year the California companies finally started to make inroads into the East Coast markets. If you like restaurant wear, this is pretty inexpensive. It's not logo, but it's definitely restaurant weight. And this is old Syracuse China, $2 each on the bowls and $3 on the big platter. And then only $4 on the Hall McCormick teapot. Now, originally it would have had an infuser that would have sat here. But it was made for McCormick Tea in Baltimore, and it does not actually say Hall China on it, even though they made it. Like the old railroad lights, from Horse Branch, Kentucky, $550. Stacking children's chairs out of the 1960s. You still see stacks of these around from schools that are closing. This patio set's in great shape. It's got a good look and it's 265. It's been recoded. They did a good job. This is Gonder pottery here. These flared leaves are the thing that they're the best known for. This one just has the USA mark. Ten dollars. You can find some really amazing things. <laughs> it looks like he looks pretty gray. We've seen that in all three places so far. That's oh, the been bean in pot. Every place today. Oh yeah. Well, that's West Bend. That's the same company that I makes know, the I penguin know, thing. But I'm saying, yeah, it's, it's the it's the new penguin. It's the other penguin. Yes. It's full of parsley, baked till brown, 1968. Yeah, yeah. That's actually kind of cute. 
It's adorable. It must have been convenient. You just hang your recipes on the wall. Well, they say the Mary Hadley Lighthouse is rare and it's two fifty, but then the cups are only three dollars each. Benton with the butterfly. This is one of the things on QVC. The QVC really kind of did them in. It seemed like a great idea. They thought they were going to make a lot of money. The problem with QVC is they make you make a certain number, and if they don't sell them all, then you have to take them back and you're stuck with them. Almost everybody I've met personally who had a QVC contract lost money on it. A new development in a time tested type of waterless cooking ware. Cook right cook in ware. You will see this stuff around sometimes still. The bakers, and you'll see some of these pattern pieces. So if you find these, well, they were made in Columbus, Ohio. And 1936 is the date on this. $3.65 for a five-piece set. Now here's a fun piece of Fire King for $20. Not a bad price, actually. I always like this patterning on it. It's very similar to what you would see by Georges Briard or one of those, but it doesn't have a signature that I've ever been able to find. So I think that this is something that Fire King or Pyrex did themselves as a decoration right in the late 70s, 60s, early 70s. Fenton vases in the 29 to 39 range. What about the hand? The hand is pretty new actually. It's that weird pink color that didn't exist until recently. Someone decoupaged this with maps. <laughs> $150 for the couch. Well, that is definitely a look from an era, and it is very clean. And even at the expense of Samantha Stevens' couch, we've had a lot of laughs today. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video, and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.